Hey everyone, welcome to another 15 minute game jam. So today we're going to work on collisions. Uh, let's see what we got so far. Um, so we have a uh, one particle that we can move around and uh, all the particles kind of stick to each other if they get close enough. Uh, one thing I've changed here, um, I've made the particle that the player controls heavier so it can move around the, uh, the group of particles a little easier. So uh, first I'm going to add a, uh, a line here just so we can see where the collisions are supposed to happen. Okay, so we'll have the uh, particles collide with this line. And uh, so I've already set up the collision bonds. So these are another type of bond. Uh, we, are, we already have the particle-particle bond that just connects two particles like a spring. And uh, the way I've done that is I have a struct for the uh, collision type of particle and it has the uh, data that that needs. So it's just one particle and it has a normal that it's going to collide with, the length which is the depth of the collision, and then uh, dampening is just a way of dampening, and then the friction which will be calculated in here. So I have a add collision particle level function so I'm going to call that and then um, in the uh, bond loop It'll uh, check if it's a particle particle. If so, it'll do what we've been doing before. Otherwise, it'll do the particle collision level function. And uh, so let's try and add that. So since right now it's just going to be one line, uh, I'm just setting the normal to uh, up on the y-axis. The depth will be the negative position of this. I'll set this uh, to that. Right, let's see if this works. Yeah, so seems to be working. They kind of go far underneath the line. Um, if we make that have part, if we make the particles have a radius, which we have here. Yeah, it seems to be a little bit better. Uh, they're still going to sink a little bit, especially when there's a lot of particles kind of pushing down. But eventually they'll work their way out. Okay, so um, let's say we want to make these bonds stronger or more stiff. Um, so it's actually pretty easy to do that. Basically, we already have it set up here. 
So if I just increase this cycle count to, let's say, eight, what this is going to do is it's going to loop through this multiple times. And um, just by doing that, it allows the forces to kind of propagate through the system and uh, will make things more rigid. So you can see now it's pretty, uh, pretty stiff. And that also works with the collision bonds too. You can see it doesn't sink as much into it. So I could just set this up, uh, have a cycle count. So I can make the the normal uh, springs still um, kind of springy, but then make the collision stiff. If I do that, it should be, yeah, you can see it's, it doesn't penetrate very much anymore. All right, let's try giving these particles some uh, gravity. Let's try a little bit more. like a slug or something. Yeah, the gravity's, I can't even lift it up anymore because the gravity's too strong. Let's try a little less. Another thing we can mess around with is how many bonds each particle can have. Right now we have it set at 24, so if we reduce that a lot, it should make it kind of stringy. doing that with uh, more rigid. But if we make the uh, player's particle even heavier. interesting. All right, so another thing we can try, I was thinking about is right now we're creating these bonds when the particles get close enough to each other. And then those just stay there. But like the with the collision bonds, you can see every uh, frame after it's done uh, calculating those if the time to live is set to zero, which all the collision bonds are, it'll basically set that to inactive. So those will only happen for one frame. So we could try doing the same thing with the particle-particle uh, bonds. Let's see what that does. Okay, <laughs> that did not work. 
Looks like it's probably creating them once, but that's about it. Uh, it's probably, what is the length of them? Oh yeah, so the length is too long. Let's try that. Nope, that's still not working. Okay, yeah, I think what's happening here is they're getting deleted before they have a chance to do anything, I guess. No. Okay, so I think I figured out what the problem is. Is um, It's uh, setting the bond to inactive, but it's not calling the delete bond function, so these particles still think that they're uh, that they're connected to all these bonds. So like here, the particle number of bonds wasn't getting set back each frame, so it would just create 16 bonds and then those would get set inactive and then they wouldn't create any more. So I think by calling the delete bond function, which should work for the collision bonds also, that should fix that. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I think it's working. It's not rendering them because they're getting deleted before They uh, are rendered. That's kind of interesting. So I think if I move this to here, then it should render them before they get deleted. not expecting that. That is interesting. Okay, this is kind of more of what I was expecting. So I've added a few more things we can try out here. So before we just had basically one line that was just kind of hard coded in for the uh, position that the uh, particles would collide with. So now I've added a level file. And um, so right now we create the level. Uh, you can see there's just a simple struct for that with the uh, number of lines that we're going to have in the level uh, and then a few functions to see if uh, a line's intersected the level and a circle's intersected the level. So what I'm doing here in the particles is if the previous position of the particle and the new position intersect with one of the lines, I'm setting the position to just outside of that collision point. And then I'm checking if the circle of the particle and its radius 
intersects the level and if so then I'm creating collision so you can see how that works pretty much the same as before but now I can do stuff like I can try setting this to zero so now the line only goes halfway through and uh, we can try adding some more lines so let's do one from zero to something like that so yeah now we have a slope try making that steeper So this isn't the fastest way of doing things. It's just checking every particle against every line in the level. But if we keep the number of lines small, it should be fine for now. So what we might want to do eventually is have like a, a grid or something that has different tile types and we can have different lines associated with those. So it's easy to check if it's like a tiled grid of, uh, you know, which lines we need to check against. But for now, we'll just leave it at this, I think. All right, so I think I'll end it here. Um, so we've got collisions working and a uh, kind of level format. Kind of fun to play around with right now. Still not sure what we'll be making, but can make something out of this, I think. Uh, yeah, so I'll do another one of these soon, hopefully, and we'll see you then.